We rode a bus. G'day, we're Jen and Ring, and together we make up Ring's great adventure. Last week we told you we were going to buy a bus, and guess what? Yep, that's right, we did. So this week we're going to tell you a little bit about how it came about, how we picked it, what we looked for, and a few of the stories along the way. Make sure you hang around to the end because we've got some great tips for you if you're going to go and buy yourself your own bus. Number one, the first thing we want to talk about is what we actually wanted. One of the things we wanted was a high roof. Why do you ask? Why do you ask? Because we've had a van before and it didn't have such a high roof. If anything, it had a low roof. And it was it was quite doable. It was quite doable. You know, we survived. As well as having a high roof for Brendan's noggin, we want to have a space that we can separate. I'm an early person. Brendan's a night bird. At night, I want to be able to go to bed and he can sit up and do his thing, vice versa. But to do that, we also needed to be off grid. We needed to be able to sustain power, enough power that we can go out for a week somewhere and we don't have to rush back to a caravan park or somewhere to quickly charge up the van. Yeah, and even though we got away with not having toilets and showers and a lot of these things in the last van, we're looking to do this much longer and with our cat and dog. We've been looking for a very long time. Yeah. We haven't seen anything that was exactly what we were after at the right price with the right kilometres. Also, one of the most important things is trying to find one that's mechanically sound, which yep. is a really hard task. Yeah, you never know what you're really going to buy. It's a bit difficult, a bit of a yeah. hit and miss. Yeah, and look, this is probably a wish more than something that we were going to get, but whatever we, we found, we were really hoping to have it as a four-wheel drive because the reality is there's a lot of amazing places in Australia that require a four-wheel drive. Yeah, four-wheel drive's good. Number two, getting advice and learning. So we obviously started small by having Chugga for our first road trip and we used Chugga to learn, learn a lot and that's how we know what we want in this next van but it also was a great learning time because we didn't overspend and blow our budget. Yeah well we, we did a lot of chatting with, with road trippers on the road, like people that we bumped into that have already got vans. Yeah there were heaps. like. In Broken Hill we met this amazing couple that had bought a Sprinter van and they were fitting it out as they were travelling in it. Mm. Uh, but they had their two dogs with them and we really loved the way they had their van set up. Yeah, yeah they had a pretty simple setup. A lot of space, the necessities, the eating, sleeping. They had a motorbike. Yeah, they carried in around. In the van. Them. Yeah. So the next thing we, that we really did in the learning process was we were talking to mechanics and people in the know about all the different vans on the market because we are comfortable with certain vehicles but not others and we really didn't know much about the cargo vans and the camper vans. We didn't know much about anything. No, but we learnt a lot talking to people. Oh, so yes. yes. We, we learnt quickly what we were more comfortable with. We like to look things up. There's always someone out there that's doing something on YouTube. There's just a lot of information on vans and how to do DIY, DIY, DIYs. So YouTube's been a really good out. tool for learning. Yeah, a really good tool for learning for us. And through that, we, we met a few people and with those underlying questions that we didn't get answered all the other ways, we went to them and we actually reached out and we got some really great personalised advice just from reaching out from creators and Instagram peoples and just asking the questions that sort of were sitting there and we really didn't know the answers to. So that was really important in our process for picking out this van. Number three, types of vans and buses. Yeah, so this list is massive, but we're just going to quickly outline the ones we looked at the most and keeping in mind that we didn't look at anything that didn't have a high roof option and wasn't readily available in the Australian market. Mm. So the first one I'm going to mention is the Ford Transit. So what we learned about the Ford Transit is you can have some great success with the Ford Transit, but you can also have some major problems. So having a mechanical family on both sides of our family, we were kind of swayed in the nay mm. direction with the transit. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have got plenty to mm. say to say that the transit's been the best thing ever. We were aware of some of the issues that we might have been facing had we have gone with the transit. Yeah, also the Mercedes Sprinter. I suppose it came back down to the cost of the Sprinter. The other thing with the Mercedes is if we, we get into trouble on the road, parts are expensive. Not only are the parts expensive, but just to get it booked in and looked at and the problem figured out is very mm. expensive. Well, I think with that one, you've got to have a Mercedes mechanic to diagnose the problems and That's you right. need to use Mercedes. Yep. It has to uh, be serviced by a registered me 
Mercedes dealer and mm. then, you, you know, what if there's not one where you are at the time? Then yeah, you it can drive. be a bit tricky. Uh, the next one we considered was the Iveco's Alley and this is probably where the cargo van venture ended. Mm. I'm no mechanically minded person, but the mechanics of the Iveco were probably the best of all of them. They don't have the price increase from the, the demand with the camper world. Would be The van life increase. Yeah, the van life increase. The van life tax. They have the room, they're nice and wide and so that was one of the ones on our radar. We also looked at the Toyota High Ace. It was bigger than the last van we had, Little Chugger. It was a little bit longer, it was a little bit taller but there's just not really that much more in it. It's just not quite as... We felt like we were taking a step back it's instead just, of taking a step forward just not quite as big and spacious as we need with all the things that we're hoping to put into it that's right but it is a really great option and we did see some great vans out there already fitted there was even a moment where i tried to convince brendan that we should get a land rover parenti which was an ex-army utility truck converted six-wheel drive and mate it would have been epic but i couldn't quite get him over the line on that one mm, not me i like the idea of it so that led us back down the path to the toyota coasters yeah coasters which was a bit of a step left for us but at the same time how can you walk past them without having a look they're bigger than anything that we'd previously looked at they had all the space and all the head height that we're after. Mm -hmm. They were reasonably easy to work on. Yeah, they're, we're really comfortable with the motors in the Toyotas. They're a super reliable car. Mm. Like these, these things go till... A million miles. They, million live, they live longer than people. Yep, yep. You know, they just they just carry on. The coasters are very popular. They have been since 1905. They're a really good vehicle. They really are. I mean, in the 80s, my family had one and we grew up travelling up and down the East Coast and doing camping trips and all sorts of things. I've got photos and videos of me and my brother having baths in the sink. And we... Everyone had one. They had one for a reason because that's... They're brilliant. They're good for what they, you want to do with them. Yep. The only thing that had put us off even looking at coasters for the longest time was a lot of them go over the weight limit that push you into a light rigid yes. license which isn't majorly a problem just another expense to take into account and something else that we both had to do mm. but there are plenty of coasters out there that you can drive on a car license the other point to the coaster was we wanted to make sure that we were still able to drive and park in most car parks without issue so the coaster was kind of pushing it a little bit but uh, it was still a really great option for us mm. number four researching the costs to fit out the ultimate adventure van so I spent probably two weeks going through all the different features and benefits and cost and availability of all the different things that we wanted in the ultimate van, the ultimate van. Mm. And that was more so that we knew when we were looking at vans, if they didn't have certain things, how much we would have to spend to get that upgrade. Mm. So we didn't want to go looking for the van, find this amazing... Ford Transit and it had everything we want but it had a cassette toilet and we really didn't want to have a cassette toilet so it was going to cost an extra X amount of dollars to put in a composting toilet mm. but if we spent our entire budget on the purchase of the van without knowing the cost of the upgrade then we were going to fall short mm. so we really took the time out to cost out the things that we wanted in the van one so that if we bought one without the item we could afford it Mm -hmm. Or two, if we had to go all the way back to building from scratch, we knew how much we needed to have to do the build before we bought the van so that we knew that we could make it to the end without running out of money. Mm. And this is something that can really get out of hand quickly. We find things every day and go, well, how good's that? We should have that in the van. There is a like cut Virginia off said, point. you've got to do your research and you've yep. got to stick to your budget because this is a project that can very easily get out of hand. Yeah, absolutely. Number five, where we looked. The first place would be online. We looked at carsales.com, Gumtree. There's marketplaces on Facebook. There's groups like Van Life. Look, there's yeah. there's plenty of platforms that you can jump online and all that. By far, I would recommend the best thing to do is open your mouth, open your gob, because that's who's selling things. There's people behind these websites and stuff like that. There's people. There's people that are going to do the deal with you. It's people that have got a bus waiting for you. So talk to people. Once people knew, our inboxes were flooded with oh. suggestions constantly every day, whether it was my sister or our friend down the road, someone we worked with, 
constantly there was a barrage of what about this one what about this one number six making up our mind ultimately we didn't find the van the bus found us yeah, it seems to be the way for us. I don't know if it's like that for everyone else. It might sound a bit cliche, but... You might go, oh, yeah, you just bloody got lucky. You, <laughs> every you, time... You buggers. Every time we're no, looking for something, yes. that something finds us. Eventually. Yeah, Sometimes ran, not quite as much as I got it for this bus. So oh, that's not true. Possibly. I actually phoned up <clears throat> a mechanic to talk about the Ivecos just to get a bit more information because mm -hmm. I was about to look at one. Yep. And they said, we got a bus. Well, we got a bus. We got a Toyota Coaster. So the new bus the that coaster. hasn't got a name Up yet coast. is a Toyota Coaster. Mm -hmm. Now, because of lockdowns, we actually haven't seen this bus in person yet. However, we did go for a ride in it about eight years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> when the same owner had it. So the things that we know about this coaster is that it's been owned by our mechanic mm -hmm. for the past 10 years, I think it is. Mm -hmm. It had less than 70,000 kilometres on it when they purchased it from a private school as a little charter bus. It's a 12-seater currently. Mm -hmm. And even after all those years, <clears throat> it's still only got just over 100,000 kilometres on the clock. So because we've found this van and we know that we're not going to be spending a fortune on it mechanically, like the mechanic said to us, if we wanted, we could jump in this bus and drive from the east of Australia, say Sydney, for those of you that don't know. So from Sydney to Perth, today without a hassle. Mm. So we have peace of mind. How good's that? <laughs> we hey? have peace of mind mechanically, but now it's just a case of picking it up, which we've booked mm. in for next weekend, mm. and we've got a conversion to do. <laughs> <sighs> Well, yeah, it's the hard part. It's that though. Look, it's not easy, mate. We're pretty excited this time you know? around because we've, we've we know a bit more than we did last time. We've had a go. We know where some of the problems are going to lie. Like when we had to get the seats and the and the disabled lift out of the last one, it was it wasn't easy. It was quite difficult to reach up under. There's there's only so much space underneath. So sometimes they put the bolts in Weird awkward spots. places, and when they do it, they've got the tools to do it. We just didn't have the tools. We, all we had was a bloody hammer. We've got a plan. We're, we're hopefully planning <coughs> to go to an undisclosed location at this time. Not trying to hold it to, from you, but yes. it's just not locked in yet. More mystery. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully in the next month or two, we're going to head to a place where we're going to have access to tools yeah. and the facilities we need to get this conversion done safely and timely. Yeah, that's right. If we had to put a date on this, which we don't really want to but to give you an idea our aim is to be on the road by early next year and so we've got a fair bit of work to do in the next four or five months so yeah. enough enough about our exciting new purchase we're going to throw in a few tips now so before you hand over your cash there's a few things that you should definitely be doing number one pre-purchase inspection you want to do that with your mechanic or a mechanic aside from the people you're purchasing it off we've heard some real horror stories over the time and if you're interested there's actually a really interesting video that i showed brendan throughout this process and it's from a uk couple there they go by the name of travel beans and they bought a van the dealer that had sold them the van had passed it but when they took it to an independent well yeah they took it straight to their mechanic oh and mate. their mechanic said jesus <laughs> shouldn't even be on jesus the road always. So Take the, it back. the learning in there is make sure you do act with due diligence and yeah. make sure that you know what you're buying. It's okay to buy something with problems, but you want to know what those problems are as best to your knowledge beforehand. If you're going, yeah, if you're going to spend money and it's not getting a pie and chips, are you? But when you're spending a good chunk of money, do your bloody research properly so that you don't have any surprise. You've got a lot less surprises in the yeah. long run, yeah. you know, because that's the start. And the, you've got to get the start right. And the, the next part that we would definitely add in this bonus tip is to make sure that you know your state rules and regulations. In Australia, obviously, we have different bodies governing the road wars. So when we get our licence and our registration for our vehicles in each state, there's slightly different rules. So wherever you are in the world, know what your local rules are because yeah. what might be okay where you buy this vehicle might not be in the place you're going to register it. It's also a good point to note that some things that are done to vans need to be signed off by electricians, plumbers, 
engineers, you know, simply putting in, a, this is an example, simply putting in a new set of seats in a van can make your roadworthy fail. So that then stops you from registering or insuring your vehicle. So before you go ripping out seats and changing them over, one, mm. know what you've got to do to make it up to your code wherever you wherever are. it is you, you live. You want to go, yeah. Yep. And, 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 that's, and that's a good point too because that's something that can absolutely ruin your whole big scheme of things. Yeah, you've got to know what your insurance will and won't cover too. An example here is we do know of someone that bought a brand new van and completed a, a build, but what they had done is breached all of the warranties on their van by drilling into the structural metal, fitting out the back of their van. So when something did go wrong, the vehicle warranty was voided because they drilled in. So everything that you do, you need to kind of be making sure you're ticking the boxes, not to be over. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to go, oh, well, we can't do what we wanted now. That's right. There what is you a do way. is you find another way. Yeah. You just need to research and know that the way you're going to do whatever it is you want to do isn't going to have a negative impact on you down at the track. Yeah. And then, like I mentioned earlier, one of our other pro tips is definitely know your budget. Not just for the purchase of the van, but the things you want to have added to it, the work you want to do to it. And also make sure there's a little bit left over because Everyone knows once you hit the road, something's going to go wrong. That's Whether right. it's a tire that blows out, I know that I know that water pipes can burst in the in the cold weather. You got to give yourself that space. Something will go wrong, but if you're prepared for it when roughly it's going to happen, then it's, it's not, not such, such a big, a big deal. deal. And with that, we're going to take off and go and have a bit of a play around with some floor plans and designing our van, and we're going to leave you with that to think about. We'll see you next week.